So the first thing I do is just, I'm gonna measure how much fabric I need. The way we do that is just go around the head till we overlap. And then from there, I just make a mark to where I'm gonna cut. And that, this, that just tells me how much I need, all right? Okay. And from here, all I'm gonna do is just cut it off, just cut the fabric that I'm gonna use. I don't want to cut it straight, so. Okay, so this is what I'm left with, right? Now, the next step is I need to figure out, this is all gonna be turned into legs, right? I'm gonna cut my legs out of here, so I need to know how far I'm gonna cut my legs up. So how I determine that is on the skirt ridge, when you cut your legs, you want your end of your legs to be right at the bottom of the skirt ridge. So how I do that is I'll fold this over in half, and then I'll just do a, a double fold here and put it up against the skirt ridge. And then this little mark here I'm gonna put in will tell me where I cut the legs. Okay, so these are all going to be turned into legs and that's my stopping point, right? Uh, the size of the legs is determined by the size of the lure. Bigger lure gets a little thicker legs, smaller lures get a little thinner legs. Of attention put into the lures yeah very much you know this is a this is a trolling industry and um, or I should say trolling fishery and um, when you jump on a boat any boat here the first thing I, I do as a mate as a captain I I take a look at the lures you know and that really will reflect on how serious the captain and crew is on that boat you know it reflects what they now it's Go ahead. Is this a tradition or is it because it works better or? Well, what? for certain lures, the vinyl works better. It's, it's a little of both. It is tradition. It is, you know, something that is known, Kona is known for. But also, it's a little lighter than rubber squid skirts. When you start getting into bigger squid skirts, uh, they start to weight the lures down and make them run a little differently. And so this vinyl actually is a lot lighter and um, will actually let the lure, allow lures to run a lot better. Now, Hawaii is pretty much the only place that does it, or any other fisheries that do it? Uh, from what I know personally, I know that Hawaii is the only spot that I see people do it every day of the year. You know, every day that we're fishing out here, somebody's running this vinyl stuff. Um, and like I said, if you see it somewhere else in the world, in any other fishery, I can almost guarantee you that they either fished Hawaii or they, they have friends, they have connections here that have that sent them vinyl lure, vinyl skirted lures. Ooh. Not a lot of not a lot of places use it. And it really is a it's a it's an art form to put them on too. You know, it you don't learn it overnight. Let's just say that it is a little tricky to do it correctly and make it look good. This is my skirt, it's all ready, ready to go. All right. So the next step is I'll get this out. This is just regular rigging floss. We don't get a maybe a, a three feet or so out. So we got a little tag in and a working in. I just make a loop and I'm gonna hold this in my mouth. And then from there what we do is we're gonna line the seam of the skirt so this is we're gonna end up like this right it's gonna be like this to get there we're gonna start with it reverse so inside out upside down okay so from here we're gonna put this edge right up against the, the bottom of the skirt ridge okay right here and then this is the back of the lure the seams gonna be in the back 
Reason being is that we don't want the seam on the bottom because we want the seam to actually stay out of the water. And I'll, I'll explain that when I'm done. So I line up the seams, I get my floss, loop goes there, tag ends here, working ends going around. All I'm gonna do is just attach this on. And you, you wanna get it tight, snug up against the lure head itself. So I kind of I go around and then I pull it back up toward there because you don't want a gap. You want it right up against. You the want bottom. it right up against the bottom of that head, exactly. If you have a gap there, it, it might throw it off. With some of these lures, they're really um, finicky in the way they run, so it'll, it'll make it throw it off. And all I do is with the working end, I come through the loop and then I pull the tag in, which snugs it, snugs it up, and it'll pull it under. That way I don't have to tie a knot or anything and it yeah. keeps everything flush. And then from there what I do is just trim. Okay, now it's attached. Now to finish it off. Flip it all over. Yeah, I'm gonna flip it all over, but I gotta first clean this up. So I'm just gonna, you see how this is overlapping here? On the bottom there? Yeah. Now if I go to flip it over, you'll see when I flip it over, this will make a big bulge there. So we don't want that. We want everything to be flush. So just takes a little fine tuning. All you're gonna do is just trim it a little bit. Okay. To close the seam here, all you're gonna do is get a little extra excess piece of vinyl, this tab, measure it out to just as much as you need. And what I'm gonna do is just trim this up a little bit smaller. get a piece about like that. It's gonna vary from the size of lure. You know, every, every like a bigger lure obviously is gonna be a little bigger tab. A smaller lure is gonna be a little smaller. And then next step is um, super glue. Any old type, doesn't matter. We're gonna, yeah, so super glue on this side. And then what I do is I'll attach the tab that we're gonna close the seam with on that side first. Okay. Hold it there for a little while as soon as it depending on what type of super glue. You try to get like a fast curing one, you know. I, I found over the years like when you you do this, you want a fast curing super glue, it kind of helps out. Okay. Like that. Okay, so you got that attached and obviously we're gonna attach the next, this side. Same thing. Let's put a bead, a bead of super glue right there. Doesn't take much. And then we're just gonna close this up. Same thing, just let it go off. Okay. Now the next step, you don't have to do it, but I've kind of gotten into the habit of doing it. One of my buddies showed me this trick, is you kind of see how this over, oh, this flap here is just kind of poofy. Um, so what we, that'll affect the finished product. So what we'll do is we'll just cut a couple of little slits in here. Okay, and then you'll see what happens when I do this. So it makes all it makes this whole flat here a little softer and pliable. So what's gonna happen is when I do go ahead and get to the finished product, it lays all flat here. You don't want you don't want what we call hips on the on the vinyl here. You don't want to put too much um, rigging floss in there because it'll make a big bump and that'll affect the way that certain heads will run. Okay, especially in really calm waters, you have to make sure everything is streamlined and nice and flat. It makes a big difference. And then now all we're gonna do here to finish up, uh, second to the last step, we're just gonna close this seal here so the seam is nice and flush. Get your bead of super glue here. There we go. Get your seam there, just line it up. You know, kind of make it straight as possible. And then same, just let it go off. And it's kind of obvious where I'm going with this. All I'm gonna do is just bring this over and close that up, make it nice and flush. Okay, there we go. Now sometimes, you know, I've seen, like I was explaining to you earlier, I've seen where 
this seam might be a little higher or you know it might overlap a little bit just that little bit of you know that little bit of overlap can affect again how the lure will run in the water it won't run properly so that's why I personally like to have a flat seam there there's nothing there's no way the water is going to catch back there when it's running in the, in the water and then um, to finish up I'm just going to trim the skirts to the you know the length of the hook set that we like to use so trim it down to right here that's our finished product so what, what we like to use is, a, is lures that are aren't too big but yet have a big presence in our pattern um, so that you know they're making a lot of commotion a lot of action back there but yet they're still this size bait so they're really a smaller target which ideally is easier for the fish to grab. Um, where big lures, you know, they work great, they get a lot of action, but you can sometimes find where the fish are having a hard time grabbing them. Or if they do grab them, you know, the bigger lures are heavier in weight, so when they do start jumping and moving around, those lures can actually, we've seen it work hooks out of the fish's face or the mouth. So that's why we like, we prefer, you know, little smaller size baits back in our pattern.